Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Check out what I have with me. It's a 2023 Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring Hybrid. That's right, we're bringing you luxury hybrid goodness today with this Lincoln Aviator. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I'm a mom of three and a certified child passenger safety tech. I also wore a dress and there's no way to hook my mic, so I will be holding it today. But let's get started on this very exciting luxury hybrid SUV. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the front end now. Completely redesigned for 2020. And you know what? I'm kind of into the front end grill. We have our nice Lincoln logo with a lot of chrome with a bunch of like mini Lincoln logos around it. It's kind of making up the grill. I think it looks really pretty. A little bit of a rounded hood right here. And then we go into some pretty hood lines, wrap around headlights. Overall, I think the exterior on the front is stunning. I actually very much like the nose of this car. Okay, so let's take a look at the exterior of the Aviator. Again, just redesigned in 2020. I am really actually liking it. I think the lines of the car are stunning. I love the Aviator badging right here. I think that's kind of unique. And then we go into some beautiful chrome detailing around the windows, but look how they leave it open. It kind of elongates the car a little bit, kind of draws your eyes. I think that looks really nice. Chrome roof rails as well. I mean, door handles are comically long. What is that all about? That is like the longest door handle I've literally ever seen on a car. But besides from that, I'm actually very impressed with the exterior. It's kind of a beautiful car. Okay, and then taking a look at the back end, this I'm ready to be reimagined, Lincoln. This bar running across here, you know, it's better on the Navigator because the Navigator is such a bigger car. There is so much red right here and I really think it kind of ages the car. This is not my favorite, especially when you see how nice and updated the front and the side are. To put it with this big red bar, I'm not obsessed. Lincoln, double spaced in chrome, some more chrome detailing here. But I mean, shout out to Dave Sinclair Lincoln here in St. Louis. They are always hooking us up with the very best Lincolns that they can possibly can and we appreciate them for that. And then when you move to the side, you will see that we have our charging so this is a plug-in hybrid here's what that means for you on full electric you're going to get 21 miles of range pure electric if you're using both electric and gas as kind of a hybrid mode you're going to get about 56 mpge's that's miles per gallon equivalent um and she's pricey she has a price tag this one of 85 thousand dollars 86 thousand after destination so it is a high ticket car it's an expensive car but let's look into the interior and see everything that we're getting okay let's start by breaking down the door panel kind of a, honestly kind of a lot going on here we have our speakers that are a very intricate design and then we go into all of our seats i'm gonna talk about the seats later on in the video but there's a lot to talk about with the seats and it looks a little busy then we go into all of our buttons like our window controls our power mirrors our locks our child locks and then this button right here is actually how you get out of the car you know there's no lever instead you just hit this button however don't worry if your battery dies or you get stuck in here there's an emergency release down here all right let's keep breaking down the interior of this lincoln aviator one word she's giving boat this car feels like the interior of a boat but kind of in a good way i actually think it feels super luxurious and what I'm impressed with the Lincoln brand is how different it feels than the Ford brand. You know, sometimes when we have these parent company brands, I feel like I'm just basically in an overpriced Ford. This feels very luxury. I'm actually very impressed. So let's start breaking it down. First things first, on my dash right here, completely digital display, it's colored. And we also have heads up display as well. The heads up display is honestly a little busy. I mean, it's showing me everything, the time, the temperature, the fact that I'm in park, how fast I'm going, the speed limit, how many miles till empty. Like I probably would need to take some things off because it's almost a little busy. But what I like about that is how much information can be displayed. It's a very wide heads up display. Overall, good job. Okay, moving on to the steering wheel. This Aviator steering wheel actually is very beautiful and also very user friendly. We have a talk to text button right here, which I think is just such a great spot to put that kind of hands-free button. Then I might move into all of my audio and climate controls and then some other controls over here. Plus my cruise control is down here. So kind of a lot going on, but the way that they kind of have hidden some of the buttons by making them just kind of like black, I think is really nice. Okay, let's move in to our infotainment system. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not loving this. I think it needs to either be tilted or integrated. It feels very much like they just went 
with an iPad. And if I'm being honest, I kind of almost have a little bit of a glare. So I would have liked it just slightly tilted. Aside from that though, it's very user friendly. I love how big all of these buttons are. It's very easy to find exactly what you're looking for. And I also think that Lincoln has, a good, has done a good job of keeping things in here, but also keeping a lot of things out of here, giving us some actual physical buttons. I find that when you're driving down the highway, having to mess with the climate control here is exhausting. It's just right here. Love it. Before we get down to that, though, we have some vents and some parking assistant features right here. We have all of our cameras, surround view camera, backup camera, front camera, all the things. And then here is our shifter. That's kind of like piano key esque thing. Um, it's a little different, but I appreciate that everything's up here. So we have some more storage down here. Speaking of more storage, a little bit of a kind of pass through right here, a good place to throw like a cell phone or something else. It also kind of has a mat right here. So it's going to keep things in place better like that. Okay, then we move into this like, what is this, like a cherry type wood trim. Um, this is what's giving it boat. But again, I'm not totally mad at the boat. We have our volume button, um, some other of our audio controls up here, and then we get into our climate control, heated seats, ventilated seats, and heated steering wheel found on this Grand Touring. A little bit of an extra cubby right here with a USB and a USB-C, a small little change collector, two more cup holders, our parking brake, and our different drive modes are there. The center console, what I like about it is how nice and wide and flat it is would be like the best place ever to have like a little car lunch a little chick-fil-a salad could happen here and then in the interior honestly for the size of the car it's a pretty impressive size center console but i'm comparing it to other cars in the class i'm impressed and then we have our wireless charger right here i thought this was kind of cool that it had like a little clamp to keep it in place and a light so from a driver's amenities perspective it's awesome. Oh, I haven't even talked about the chairs yet. These chairs are crazy. They're like a gamer type zero gravity chair. Probably some of the most comfortable chairs I've ever sat in. In the way that you can control it. You can just control this part. You can control the entire seat back. These things right here are separate. So you can just have one go out if you just like need to have one leg that needs more support. It hugs you nicely. It supports you. I mean, like not to over talk about the seats, but truly some of the most comfortable seats i've ever sat in why are you calling them chairs did i call them chairs you called them chairs like five times <laughs> they're giving the okay seats sorry but they're they're giving chair no it even has a massaging and like uh, like normally i'm not the biggest mas this is a good massage look at this it's telling me what it's doing it's everywhere this seat chair car seat is so comfortable. Okay, time to break down the car seat setup of this Lincoln Aviator. So I have the captain's chairs today. With the captain's chairs, here's what you're getting. You're getting lower anchors and tether anchors in every single seat. So that is two in the front, two in the back, which is honestly A plus work, Lincoln. So good job for that. As far as the headrests are concerned, the headrests in this car are not removable. However, they did not get in the way of any of my car seat installations. I have two car seats installed here in the aviator to give you an idea of spacing. We're gonna start with an upper baby Mesa that's installed, obviously rear facing. Behind the driver, this seat is set for myself at about six feet tall, and I'm pleasantly surprised with the clearance. All right, here we have a shot of me in the second row of the aviator. This seat, again, set for a tall driver like myself. And my knee clearance is actually pretty good, as is my head clearance. It's not the best second row leg room in its class. There's definitely cars that have more leg room. But overall, I'm pretty comfortable. Breaking down this door panel, we do have built-in sunshades, which I absolutely love. And then a little bit of um, some side cubbies, cup holders down here. And then that same kind of... Um, door handle type thing right there. As far as some of my other amenities are concerned, we have only vents down here. Wow, I'm disappointed in that. We have some vents down here, USB, USB-C. And then with these captain's chairs, instead of having like just a clear aisle, we actually have more cup holders and storage right here. So something to note, I'm kind of neutral on that. Sometimes I wish I had a full entire aisle, but if you're not gonna be using the third row regularly, I appreciate that like we have more storage here on the floor because that's really, because then I have cup holders back here. If not, I probably wouldn't have any cup holders. So let me know in the comments below what you think about having cup holders in the floor. Is it annoying or do you appreciate the extra cup holder? Okay, now let's break down the third row access because yes, we do have a third row. There's two very nice seats in the third row and I even installed a car seat for you. So third row access, there's a button up here. You hit the button and the seat will tilt forward and then slide and then I could access the third row or buckle my child into the third row. So back here, I have a Graco Slim Fit LX3 installed forward facing with the seat belt. Feel good about the installation. Appreciate that there's only two seats back there because you know what you're getting? Two good seats. Instead of three average seats, we have two solid seats back here. Okay, so here's a shot of me in the third row of the aviator. I'm gonna be honest, not the best leg room. We did move this seat back just slightly. 
um, or sorry, we moved the seat forward just slightly. The seat is touching, but it's not braced, so it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm not very comfortable, but I'm very tall. So, you know, if you're not as tall as me, you'll probably be comfortable. But here's what I'm excited about. This is the Gray Coast Slim Fit LX3. It's one of my new favorite slim convertible car seats. Um, and it's actually doing very well here in the third row. So I was able to install it with the seatbelt, but again, I like that I have both lower anchors and tether anchors in both of these seating positions. These headrests are not removable, but as you can see, they're not interfering with my car seat installation. So overall, I give it like a pretty good score for third rows and car seats. So that's exciting. Um, as far as my amenities are concerned back here, we have cup holders on either sides and our vents are down here. So all in all, a pretty decent third row for what you're getting for the size of this car. Now, I'm sure what you can see behind me is a stroller. So let's check out the trunk space. Okay, let's take a look at the trunk space of this Lincoln Aviator. Our trunk button is right here. There's a little car kind of marking it. I'm just gonna hit this. Of course, we have a power tailgate. And in here we have the Zoe double twin stroller. That's right, a double freaking stroller fitting with the third row up. Like it fits honestly very well. I'm very excited. Now take a look at this trunk space with no stroller. Underneath here is some additional storage as well. Great place to put like extra clothes for your kids, an emergency kit, anything like that. I think it looks awesome. So to put the seats down in the third row, you're just gonna pull this tab to release the headrest and then it's just power over here. Lays down nice and flat for some additional cargo if needed. So thank you all so much for tuning in to this 2023 Lincoln Aviator Hybrid Tour. Let me know in the comments below if you'd rather have this or the Volvo XC90 Hybrid. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.